Hello, welcome to Literary Life. So today I'm going to be reviewing my November reads for the first half of the month so far. Um, we are already in the middle of November. The way my book reviews work is I give every book one to five stars. So one star means I just did not like the book. I maybe didn't even finish it. Um, two stars, meh. The book was just okay for me. Uh, three stars, I like the book and I would recommend it to certain people. Four stars, love the book. I would recommend it to lots of people. And those five star books are just my absolute faves. And I just want to tell people, read this book, read this book to everyone. All right, so let's get started. November so far has been a very diverse month. I've got a big spread. Um, I did have a one star book and I really, really wanted to like this. And I ended up DNFing it. And it was Celestial Bodies for me. So this book was the first book written in Arabic that won the Man Booker Prize. And I, God, I just kept trying and kept trying. So let me tell you what the book's about, and then I'll explain what, what was hard for me. Um, so this book follows three women um, who are family members and sort of their lives over a wide span of time. And it really pulls in like the customs, the culture, um, and family. Everything about that meets all of my areas of interest. When I started reading the book, each chapter of the book is from a different person's perspective. And like we start with one of the three um, sisters' perspectives, we go to the mom's, then we go to her husband's. Normally, I would love that. That is another thing. I love multi-perspective storytelling. I couldn't, I, I, it, I just could not follow like what the point was, what was happening. It, it jumped around from different points in time and different stories. Again, that's something that normally wouldn't bother me. I, I just, I couldn't get to what the point is. And I'm not sure if it was just me or it's a cultural thing, um, but I just really struggled with it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my giveaway stack. I have a whole pile. Um, I do my giveaways now on my Facebook and Instagram um, posts just because I can message the winner and make sure they're aware that they won. Um, I won't be doing any. I got to get this book out from last week's giveaway to the winner that I drew Sunday. So as soon as I do that, I'll start getting my giveaways. Um, I, just, I need to get this book out before I do the next one. So if you're interested in that book, um, I bought it brand new, read once by me. I'll, I'll let that know. Um, it, it's going to end up in a giveaway. Okay, three star book. This is a book I liked. And I actually, if you are a mystery fan and you're not familiar with this series or you have been reading it, definitely, definitely um, pick this one up. This was such a cozy, good read and perfect for like this time of year. And that was Deborah Crombie's A Bitter Feast. So this series follows two inspectors who initially work together and eventually form a relationship and get married. And their blended family unit and what happens as the kids are growing up, I don't even know how many books are in this series now, maybe 20. I, I, I have them all, but it, it's just, it, it, it's, a, it's one of those that I've had some series that you read and it, it feels like it's the same book with a slightly different couple events thrown in. It doesn't feel that way with these because the characters are genuinely evolving and the kids are growing up. Um, so I love that. And the mystery itself is so well done. Um, so essentially our main characters go away for a vacation to one of their colleagues' um, family homes and... Um, murder happens and they get very much wrapped up in it and in solving the case but it's it's just well written good plot and like I said this is a book if you are a mystery fan it was just I'm reading it and I'm like it's perfect it's perfect for November um it would have been great in October so loved this book well I really liked it it was a good three-star solid read for me um okay so then I had a couple four stars so let's talk about those one I just finished, and this is the book Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. So Queenie is following a woman in her 30s who is Jamaican British, if I remember this correctly. And she's essentially, she's just gone through a breakup and um, she's spiraling out of control. And she's just, it seems like she's drawn to um, the wrong type of guys and she's throwing herself into like these horrendous, 
dating apps and one night stands and um, it's impacting her work and she's got this group of friends and you kind of follow along with her seeing herself spiral and just not be able to stop it. So there were two elements to this book I really liked. And one was it was actually darkly comedic. Is that the right word? So it was witty. It was funny. I love several of the characters and I was laughing like half the time I read it. Simultaneously a heartbreaking book because it, it does a really good job of balancing out the humor and laughing at pathology, but also there's pathology and being human and the impact of our um, childhoods, our experiences, family relationships, and it's touched on as well in here. And I love the fact that that was all woven together and pulled off very well. Um, so Queenie by Candace Carty Williams, a four star read for me. Um, and I would pretty much recommend this to anybody that's intrigued by relationships, um, self awareness, and family. This is this is a good one. Uh, so the next book. Four stars for me. I actually did not expect to like it this much, especially when I first started reading it. Um, that was me by Elton John. So when I saw his autobiography was coming out, I was like, oh, intrigued. Like, I I mean, he's just, he's led quite a life. Um, he became famous at a very young age. So in my mind, you know, when you go through that fame at a young age, it distorts your sense of the world in the sense that you now have a very exclusive experience, right? Lens that you're looking through life at because things, obstacles tend to be minimized um, because of your wealth and your power and position, right? So I, I normally, when I read books, my point I'm getting to is I, when I pick up a book by somebody like Elton John, I'm expecting to read it with a sense of, ooh, I want to get a glimpse into what it must be like to live in that world. I don't expect to be able to relate to it or to learn something from it that would actually impact myself. But I did. And that part to me was what really brought it from like a three-star good memoir to a four-star read for me. Um, it, so that his, his growth, I think if he had written this autobiography at a younger age, it wouldn't be the book it is today. I think the fact that he wrote it at the time of his life that he did really adds value. And it's really interesting to hear, um, about his story as well as about the wealth and the people he's met and the things he's experienced. So a good one, if you're, if you're an Elton John fan, of course, you should pick up this book. But if you're also like a fan of um, autobiographies, um, this this is a really interesting, really interesting read. Uh, So yeah, and I like I said, his maturity at the time he wrote it, I think is what really adds value. Um, So loved that book. Okay, one five star read for me. This is actually the continuation of the second book in a trilogy. It's a thriller horror book. And I just love it. I absolutely, this book has blown me away. I had mentioned before, I'd seen this uh, trilogy on Instagram. It's by J.D. Barker called The Fifth to Die. Um, so this is following a serial killer called the 4MK Killer. And we met the killer in the first book. Uh, we meet our main police detectives. I They're well-written. I love their, their banter and their relationships with each other. Um, but the story just does such a good job of bringing in entertainment, um, well-developed characters, and just a really well-crafted mystery with that thriller aspect that keeps you just turning the pages and wanting to keep going. And in this particular book, um, we have another series of murders occurring, but the question is, are they by our 4MK killer who is missing, who escaped, um, or are they by another killer and our main detective um, who has sort of formed a relationship of uh, co- communication with the 4MK killer has gone down to New Orleans. The, the main story takes place in Chicago, which is also kind of fun because I'm in the burbs of Chicago and just hearing these places is always fun to read. But he goes down to New Orleans where the main killer, killer is from to um, find out a little bit more about his childhood. So it's a well done, like, here's what's currently playing, um, taking place in Chicago. 
and then here's a little bit about our killer so the final book in this trilogy it's like six child something i forget i i still have to buy but i'm gonna get um probably get it read in december next month and wrap this trilogy up because i, I want to remember all the details in these when i read the final one um but yeah i just i love them so for me i would say for sure if you're into thriller or horror books these are extremely graphic though um there's a lot of, of of graphic detail in these books so uh i would not recommend it for people that um don't like to experience that but if you are okay with it these definitely read those if you want to dabble and get into some thriller and horror and you're willing to really step in with that graphic component these are one this trilogy is one to definitely try and it's an easy read i find there are some books when i'm exhausted at the end of the work day and it's like i i just i can't follow this book like that's my <laughs> My, my state of mind and this one it's it was like no problem it's got that perfect balance of you know complex enough good plot um but still easy enough to read at the end of a long day so there you go the fifth to die my one five to read so i have a stack waiting on my nightstand so i'm gonna go pick my next one and get reading so you do the same and happy reading as always thanks for watching